This conference will now be recorded. Right, guys. So if you could just, uh, yeah, mute your mics. Brilliant. No worries. And if you do want to say anything, be, you know, be my guest. You can basically just unmute your mics if you want to ask anything. If there's anything you're not following, definitely, um, you know, just uh, just either type it or you can uh, you can ask me. So um, it was Estera who asked me quite a, a, a detailed question regarding um, inflation, increased inflation and what it means overall. So I'll just read out the question and I'll go through it try to clarify these things. So she said, hi Leon, similar question to the one above, which was basically uh, here, which was basically Vivek's question last week, but actually I can read it from here. So, um, so uh, just watch the video on inflation and interest rate, rate um, relationship and a bit confused. So based on the video, it seems that increased inflation equals decrease um, in purchasing power of a currency, which is a weaker currency. That is correct yeah that is actually correct and if we look at you know the definition of for example deflation this is basically what it means so in economics deflation is the decrease in the general price level of goods and services so deflation occurs when the inflation falls below zero so inflation reduces the value of a currency over time but sudden deflation increases it so Think of inflation as a sort of devaluation in a sense, right? So the sweet spot for central banks is 2% over the year, yeah? They uh, have this in their economic models in, in, I guess, the Western world. This is the target um, for a for I guess a healthy currency and healthy you know uh, healthy eco economy right um, and they have this two percent target at the moment yeah now if prices if inflation goes above that it actually means that the currency is devaluing right devalue now, an extreme, so let's say, for example, it's at 5%. Yeah, it means that it's being, it's being devalued. Yeah, so inflation reduces the value of the currency over time. So, so if you get in, uh, high inflation, it means that it costs more of that currency to buy a particular service or good so think about it for example um a mars bar or a chocolate bar right for those of you who are not in the uk let's say a, a chocolate bar costs you one pound this year yeah and next year it costs you one pound ten pence yeah your currency the currency has been devalued because it costs now more pounds or dollars or euros or yen, wherever you are, right, in the world, yeah, to buy. So this year, 2020, it cost you one pound. Next year, it's going to cost you one pound ten or one dollar ten one euro ten cent yeah it's because it's costing it, it's taking more of your of the currency to buy the same chocolate bar does everyone follow so your currency is being devalued if it every time prices go up so if it goes up next year to one pound 20 things are being de your currency is being devalued because it's costing more of that currency to buy the same item yeah so that inflation yeah generally is a devaluation of currencies and pretty much fiat currencies are guaranteed to all devalue right because that's the target that is the central bank target now with deflation it's the other way around right so deflation is actually your currency is getting very expensive and when a currency gets expensive it's actually a problem. It's actually a, a, a massive problem. Does anyone know why an expensive currency is a problem for an economy or for GDP? 
or what the relation is. Let's have a look. Uh, exports, absolutely, Ben. So exports are basically an imports and trade balance is what a country, you know, basically uh, sells or, or buys, right? Imports and exports. If a country sells or exports more than they take in, yeah, then they are in what is known as a trade surplus. Yeah, just think about if you run a business or just think about your general household, yeah, where if you're, you know, you, your wife, your partner, your husband, whoever, right, and your kids, if you're making more than you're spending, then you're in a surplus. If you're not, then you are in a deficit, right? So if, if countries are importing more than they're exporting, then they're in a deficit. CIT, I think how you spell it, deficit, right? But so, so in order to be competitive, in order to be competitive on exports, in fact, it's desirable for a devalued currency, not too devalued, but just a devalued currency, right? An exchange rate, a cheaper exchange rate, is actually advantageous because if I'm selling something and let's say, for example, Ben and let's say Samaita and Ebe, we're all selling the same product yeah, to the world, but they can buy it from Ben cheaper than they can anyone else, then the world is going to go to Ben, right? It's just literally, it's the same thing as economics. Yeah. So a cheaper exchange rate yeah boosts you know exports meaning that when it comes to gdp yeah you should have gdp should, should be growing right you should have a surplus and you should you know it's it's good for an economy now the world is in a recession at the moment right the world is in a recession due to covid so when it comes to a recession, anyone who's selling anything, yeah, which is basically everybody, all countries, want a cheaper exchange rate, don't they? Because they want to sell as much as possible to the world, therefore boosting GDP growth or assisting in, in, in boosting GDP growth. If the currency is too expensive, which is basically what, you know, is happening in Europe, Right with deflation, yeah, where they're below their their two percent target, so that should be zero percent, yeah. The currency or minus in 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 the case of maybe you know Japan or or the Swiss franc, I don't think they're in minus inflation anyway, but um, not now, but they were um, and suffering from deflation for years. It's because in fact the currency is expensive. And they don't need an expensive currency in a recession because why? Because it hurts exports and it has a knock on effect on GDP and they are they can't be competitive. And this is the reason why we're we're in what's known as a currency war. Yeah, a currency war is competitive devaluations. So let me just get this up. Yeah, uh, let me just delete this. And is everyone following me so far, by the way? Is anyone, I, I don't want no one to be left behind. Is everyone following so far? If you're not, let me know. Currency, E-N-C-Y, war. Yeah, so a currency war one second, let me just double check. Everyone's following. Ben, yep, Daniel, Ladarian. Welcome, Ladarian, and welcome to everyone who's just uh, come in. Fitz, welcome to you guys. Right. So a currency war, yeah, is known as competitive devaluations. So central banks are competing to devalue, yeah, is a condition in international affairs where countries seek to gain a trade advantage over other countries by causing the exchange rate of their currency to fall in relation to other currencies and why would they why are they doing that because of the fact that we are all in the we're in a global recession everyone's competing to sell yeah everyone's competing on exports and trying to grow their economy and an, and and an expensive currency yeah so a currency that's suffering from 
deflation, for example, it's not helpful. It's not helpful at all. So going back to the question, which is um, low inflation equals interest rate cuts. Yes, because an interest rate cut basically does what is, is the, the intention is to devalue the currency, right? So low inflation devalues the currency, which should not necessarily a stronger currency. It's not necessarily a stronger currency. It boosts inflation. Yeah, because if you have a strong currency, well, let's start off. If you have a weak currency, yeah, a devalued currency, right? It's a devalue. Remember, it costs more of going back to the Mars bar situation uh, or the chocolate chocolate bar um, analogy. Yeah, it costs more of that currency to buy a Mars bar, therefore devaluation boosts or should boost inflation. Yeah, inflation will rise the more a currency is devalued. So let's look at, and before we, before just, just, just to give you an extreme, yeah, of, of what, does everyone know what hyperinflation is? Yeah, hyperinflation. Everyone know what hyperinflation is or has heard of hyperinflation. Yeah. Okay. So, so low inflation. Yeah, low inflation. And when we say low inflation, I guess what we mean is, um, uh, yeah. So low inflation would indicate that the the currency is actually strong. Right. Or, or say when we say low inflation below the two percent target. So below that two percent target, it means that the currency is strengthening. Right. So strengthening, which actually the result of that, if it's below the two percent target, let's say, for example, it's one or zero point five. Yeah. Or even zero. They have to boost it to what? Two percent, don't they? So they have to end up cutting rates. Yeah, they have to end up cutting rates, which then should have the effect of boosting. The. Or weakening the currency. So in a way, in fact, I guess maybe I've read this, you know, slightly wrong. I understand when I read this in my mind, I kind of did it a different way, but I understand why you've done it in this sequence so low inflation actually means yes a strong currency but the result of that would be for the for an interest rate cut to devalue to weaken the currency so that is basically how that goes so low inflation equals a strong currency therefore you would need to cut interest rates so in fact, if you could probably go like one, two, and then three. By the way, is the is is um I think Esther, are you are you in here? Are you in here? By the way, are you in here? Uh, hopefully, no, 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 she's still not in here. All right, because I'm I really want the one. But is everyone else follow that? By the way, is everyone else following? Or does, you want me, does everyone want to go over it again? Everyone's following. Yep, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So high inflation. Yeah, which is which is hyperinflation. Yeah. Hyperinflation. Um, you want interest rates. Basically, high inflation equals weaker currency. And then the result of that is interest rate hike. Yeah. So one. Two, three. Yeah. So hyperinflation, hyperinflation. Everyone knows or has heard of, or in recent history, matter of fact, I think it was um, Venezuela. Does anyone know about, you know, Venezuelans' uh, um, uh, massive problem when it comes to inflation, right? Because inflation is basically prices. So let's look at Venezuela. This is trading economics. Look at this. Their inflation rate is at 1,813%. Think about it. The uh, central bank target is normally around 2%. 1,813%. Yeah. 
and we can look at their inflation rate in October 19 on you know around October 19th last year and let's go to five years look at this in 2019 their inflation rate was 350 thousand percent it's now come down to obviously you know 1000 or nearly nearly 2000 percent yeah basically when prices were here and you can do a do a google search and type in you know venezuelan hyperinflation or you know venezuelan inflation and then go back to 20, 2019 and look at what was happening in venezuela um and i remember this as well is is it didn't necessarily get that much coverage on you know on tv um, not in the UK. I mean, it was there in a, it for for about a week or so, and then it kind of just, you know, kind of died off. But there, money wasn't worth anything. Yeah, you, it was. It was literally couldn't buy you a thing. Yeah, people were literally walked as money in the streets. And I saw like um, a, uh, I think it was like a YouTube video where you know kids were playing with just the money, just to you know um in in a playground because it was literally just worth nothing couldn't buy anything with it or say anything but you could hardly buy anything with it. it's practically worthless but the point is is that this is when when inflation gets too high so imagine this is your two percent target down here and you're a you know three hundred and fifty thousand percent that is a devalued currency that is a major devalued currency yeah so inflation reduces the value of a currency over time. But that happened in the space of, you know, uh, six months or whatever it was, or is it, you know, from 18 years. So basically a space of a year, it was devalued. So everybody following still? Everyone following me? So when we go back to understanding the question, you have it, actually you have it right uh Estera, when you wrote this i just think maybe in the way that i maybe have understood it it's kind of like i said just maybe put in in a, in a different way and hopefully that does clarify what this is so next part of the video higher interest rates right would equal the currency getting stronger in fact it's the other way around so central banks remember will raise interest rates yeah so they will give you a better return if the currency is actually getting weaker because remember what inflation is yeah so inflation reduces the value of the currency over time so the more that inflation goes higher in fact that is devaluing the currency so the currency is actually getting weaker yeah and when lowering interest rates yeah is actually used to devalue a currency yeah well actually matter of fact, before i go into that so why raise why raise interest rates why raise interest rates if the currency is getting weaker and it's because when you think about like <clears throat> if if you walk down the street and you go and you see again three banks on the high street One's offering you 2%, one's offering you 3%, one's offering you 5%. Most people are going to go with the 5% return, right? Because you're going to get, if, if I put in a thousand pound, I'm going to get 5% of my money. Yeah. And think about that times, um, you know, uh, however many people are on the street at the time. Everyone who's walking down that street and sees those free banks, they're going to put their money in the higher yielding. Yeah, the higher yielding bank. Yeah, so <clears throat> so when a currency starts to get weaker, central banks have to entice people to save and put money and 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 you know um, to try to strengthen the currency. Yeah, to buy that currency and hold that currency, that currency. and invest in that currency by giving them a higher interest rate. Because it's being devalued, and if it gets devalued too much, who wants to own? <clears throat> who wants to own? You know, a, a currency that is going to that is that is that isn't going to buy much, right? So they have to give you an incentive, and that is what is known as 
interest rates and giving you a higher interest rate. Is that, does everyone follow that? Is everyone following? Yep. Is everyone is anyone not following? Is anyone not following? Type a N if you're if you're if you're not following. N for November. Yep. So, all right, everyone's following. Brilliant. Oh, could the could the person who's got their mic on, could you um could you mute your mic for me? Or I'll mute you, matter of fact. I'll mute HP. Welcome, HP. Um, I think this may be your first time, but welcome, warm welcome to you. Um so so the point is is that when a currency actually gets weaker then they have to raise interest rates when a currency is getting too strong yeah in order to stop traders or investors whoever it is yeah from piling into that currency what they have to do is say all right then we'll only give you 0.5% for example yeah to try to get you to not hold that currency, maybe to spend that currency more, et cetera, because the currency is too strong. They don't want you to invest in that currency. Yeah, so that's the reason why, and they're not going to incentivize you to hold that currency. That's the reason why when a currency gets stronger, yeah, the currency gets stronger, They have to lower interest rates to get you not to put your money in. So think about it the opposite way. Yeah. If the currency was getting stronger and they were giving you 5%, then people would be piling into that. And then we think about again GDP and exports. Yeah. And exports, what they sell. Yeah, it will it would hurt exports because the exchange rate would be so expensive. I mean, how many of us shop in, you know, when you think about a comparison, think about H&M, think about Zara, think about Primark for those of you who are in the UK and think about the volume and any cheap shop or I say cheap, but any shop where you can where you can basically buy quality goods or some quality goods, I guess, for a lower price you're going to have a lot more people going to those shops than anyone for example buying um uh Louis Vuitton for example or um you know Louboutin or whoever it is you know what i mean Th yes those luxury goods you know do sell but not at the volume of a cheaper store right that's does everyone follow for the follow that analogy Yeah. So the point is, is that you want a cheap currency to boost exports, which boosts GDP. You do not want when 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 they're lowering interest rates, it means that their currency is too strong and they're trying to weaken the currency. In order to and especially in a recession. Especially in a recession so hopefully that clears everything up so she says so, so my confusion is that in one part of the video it seems that higher interest rates mean the currency is weaker and in the other part of the video the higher interest rate means that the currency is stronger so hopefully I've cleared that that up just literally in the section um, you know above and I understand I totally understand where traders get mixed up and confused because it is a bit like upside down and things like that but once you understand the concepts of this hopefully that should make sense and is again is everyone following me and you know i just want to just want to double triple check that everyone understands this stuff because once you get this then everything else will fall into place then i can talk freely about other concepts, for example, the New Zealand dollar, I can talk about, you know, um, some other questions without having to kind of go back and explain this stuff. So 
don't worry if you know you're you're just still not too sure on it just let me know okay uh i'm a bit confused okay so just arrived all right so unfortunately i can't necessarily go back on because you've come a bit late um i can't necessarily go back on the whole thing again because i've been talking for maybe around about 20 minutes 25 minutes so you'll have to you know watch it um again and again just let me know later on if you are still confused but I, hopefully that clarifies um most things uh, or should clarify everything as far as what's expensive and what's cheap so uh the next question right was from job red i think it was it says uh i'll pick back on the inflation related question to this one right so how does central bank posturing allow average inflation versus inflation target change uh to to allow inf average inflation uh, versus inflation to uh, change how should we look at the weakening strength? okay right so here's again leading on to that let me open up another another uh da, 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 create new boards right so the fed the federal reserve have introduced uh fait right which is basically this is at the jackson hole event in august and um what that stands for is federal average inflation target so again what central banks have a mandate to do is to get inflation yeah T I O N, right inflation to their magical two percent target once they get to that two percent target and what normally happens is then they will start to you know hold rates yeah and if it gets above that two percent target then they will tend to hike rates Again, why would they hike rates? Because if it's above that 2% target, it's starting to be devalued, right? Which means that they have to incentivize people to, you know, invest in that devalued currency, yeah? So that stems, that should increase the value of the currency, therefore bringing inflation down, yeah? So it should increase the value value right and that should bring inflation down yeah as if if it was below and cutting rates right so cutting rates tting sorry for my handwriting i'm writing on a trackpad at the moment um so my handwriting's not the best but cutting rates would do what to inflation it would boost inflation because basically if it's below two percent then it's appreciating right appreciating so it's getting expensive and cutting rates devalues a currency or should do therefore it boosts inflation so it does the absolute opposite right so inflation goes up yeah, so this is expensive, E-X-P-E-N-S-I-V-E. -E. Now, going back to the question, which is inflation 2% target. This is what, the, this is what you know, uh, central banks are implementing at the moment. So as soon as inflation reaches that 2% target, then they'll either hold. If it goes above, then they start to hike. The problem is, yeah, for the for central banks at the moment is that they don't want to uh, uh hike too soon yeah and it's because if you hike too soon what is what is hiking doing it's it's making the uh the value of the currency um the, the, the aim is to, of, of a hike is to increase the value of a devalued currency and they want a devalued currency why do they want it because again exchange rates yeah so they want a cheaper exchange rate right exchange rate to help boost exports which then sorry i said s which then boosts gdp 
Yeah. So they want a cheap exchange rate. They want a devalued, they actually want a devalued currency. Yeah. So there's a balancing act. Let's say, for example, inflation gets to 2% and they can't control inflation. Only, I mean, the tools that they use to try to control inflation are hikes, hold and cuts, but they can't, but that's how they, that's the only way that they can try to control inflation. Yeah. Now, let's say, for example, inflation reaches 2%, but the, 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 the economy, yeah, GDP is still, we're still in maybe the recession phase or we might be in the recovery phase of the economic cycle, yeah? Say we're recovering. If they increase rates or hike rates too soon, it may damage the recovery because it makes exports more expensive and it hurts GDP because they don't want an expensive currency, correct? They want to keep their currency devalued. So what the Federal Reserve has done with their basically their masterstroke is said is they're basically doing an average. Yeah, this is average. Right? Average inflation. Rather than just saying, all right, at 2% or 2.5%, we're going to hike rates. What they're saying is, is that as soon as it hits 2%, but let's say, for example, over the year, yeah, the average inflation over the past year was actually maybe 1.2%, even though the latest figure may hit 2% target, they're actually looking at this average 12 month period, I think it is, they're looking at before they, before they consider hiking rates or holding rates or whatever they're going to do so that they can allow the economy to go into just past the recovery phase into the expansion phase yeah of the economic cycle and potentially the boom phase they don't want to choke off the, the the economic recovery before it's even had a chance by hiking rates everybody follow me everyone following yep that's exactly it brilliant brilliant and if you understand this if you understand this, there's, there's outside of this, what more is there to really, you know, know that, you know, you don't necessarily need to know everything else to make money, right? If you can understand this concept, then you understand that you start to compare currencies now, right? So then you put, and let's, be, let's do an example, right? So at the moment, a real life example, let's create, yeah? Real life example. So let's look at everyone's favorite EU. Right. So the Fed have introduced their basically game changing F A I T system, right? So Vivek says if there's before I get into that, right? Vivek says if the interest rates are hiked, the central bank wants to devalue the currency. But as investor trader, would you try would you buy that current? All right. So before so what the thing is what you need to think of vivek yeah is why would they hike rates in the first place you know what i mean they won't the, the the central bank won't hike rates if inflation isn't at their two percent target or above at least above their two percent target so it it if it, it, it follows in order right so it follows so it's like it's basically you're looking at gdp and inflation yeah are the two things uh, inf all right so let me let me do it this way then you have you have you have 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 any of you heard of the circle of control basically the circle of control is like a a um it's um it's a concept where it helps basically uh, Best way I can put it is like basically uh, uh, relieve stress and put things in order, right? In your life, there are things that you should worry about and things that you that you that you shouldn't worry about. There are things, the things that work, the work that you worry about should be the things that you can actually do something about, and it's called the circle of control. And 
there are things that you cannot worry about, yeah? And that is outside of the circle of control, yeah? If you're worrying about things, and not to, it's gonna make sense in a sec. If you're worrying about things that are outside of your control, then you're gonna basically be very stressed out because there's nothing you can do. You know, if you're trying to squeeze an extra hour out of the day, yeah, unless, you know, you've got some magical power where you can, you know, spend space and time, you're fighting a, a losing battle, right? There's only 24 hours in a day. You can't make 25 hours. So why even, you know, stress about that? Now, the point is, is that GDP and interest rates are in a central bank's world, they're, they're, they're outside of their control, right? So GDP is here and inflation is here. But what is within their circle of control? Anyone? What is within this circle of control? Exactly, interest rates, right? So monetary policy, right? So interest rates, right? Quantitative easing, stimulus, bond buying, you know, you got it, right? All of that stuff, whatever they want to call it. That, yeah, this and this is outside of their circle of control. So what we need to think about is, is what the central bank needs to think about is is trying to they're trying to balance inflation and the uh the the economy via these monetary policy tools so if you can think about it like that so then the question when you say if the interest rates are hiked yeah the central bank wants to devalue the currency. Why would they devalue? Why would they hike rates? You know, what I mean, if 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 the inflation, which is basically outside of their circle of control, is if inflation is below their two percent target, let's say for example, it was a, you know, one percent. Why would they hike rates? They would only hike rates if it's three percent, four percent, five percent above that two percent target. Yeah, that makes sense, Vivek. Maybe all right. So let me so let me carry on with the um. So let me carry on with the EU example, right? So the EU example. Yep. Yeah, okay. Brilliant, Vivek. So the Federal Reserve at the moment are doing average inflation. All right. That's their policy now. The, the European Central Bank are basically saying they're doing the old model, which is basically as soon as prices or sorry, inflation gets to 2%, then we will, we will consider hiking rates. Yeah. Or if it gets above that, then we consider hiking rates. It gets to 3%, 4%, et cetera. Yeah. Now, the Federal Reserve have the advantage because they can wait. Remember, I was saying to you about GDP and not choking off GDP. Yeah. If you make the currency, if you make a currency expensive, you start to hike rates. It actually has a negative effect. It can have a negative effect on GDP. And if you're not out of a recession fully yet. Right, because remember, inflation is not in their circle of control. It's outside. So you can have inflation go to three, four percent for example, but you can still be in a recession. So what the Fed has done, what the Fed has done is they've said, all right, even if it hits three or two percent, whatever it is, yeah, this month or next month or on whatever date, we are not going to raise rates. We are not going to hike rates. We're going to do nothing because we're looking at the average over a 12 month period, let's say. I don't know exactly what it is, but I think it's over a 12 month period. The, right. So they, they're not going to hike rates, are they? They're not going to hike rates as soon as their inflation target hits 2% or above 
overshoots. But now, but let's look at the European Central Bank because they haven't they haven't uh, uh, decided on their system yet, right? They're still using the old system. So if Europe now reach their two percent or above two percent inflation target, remember that's outside of their control. They try to control it with interest with, with, with interest rate hikes or cuts, yeah, or QE, etc. Yeah. If it reaches two percent or or above two percent, let's say for example on a particular date, they will be forced to hike to sorry yeah to hike rates sooner than the U.S. Therefore, therefore, who is going to remain competitive when it comes to GDP? Anyone? The U.S. Exactly. U.S. dollar. Right. Absolutely. The U.S. are going to remain because their exchange rate is cheaper than Europe. Therefore, that should boost GDP because they have a better, they have a much better exchange rate. They have a cheaper exchange rate. They're going to get more customers. If I'm in, if I'm in the UK and I want to buy, let's say, for example, beef, right, from the EU, or I want to buy beef from the, from, 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 from the US. Now that when I'm not tied. You know, the UK are not tied by Brexit and we can do our own trade deals. Who am I going to buy my meat from? The same meat. Yeah, I'm going to buy it from the US because the US, I can get more money. I can say more money. I can get more products or I can get better products or whatever it is for a cheaper exchange rate. I don't want to shop at in Europe for the same quality meat, let's say, for example, and pay more. So the so so the EU are more sorry so the US dollar sorry are more likely to get international investors and buyers investing and boosting their economy while Europe will lag behind and this is what the competitive devaluations are about competitive devaluations currency wars this is what the currency war is Yeah, you're seeing it. You're seeing it on the charts. You're seeing it on the charts. Euro dollar. Yeah, you've seen it since the beginning of this year. Yeah, I say beginning of this year. I would say from from April May. Yeah, you've seen the euro increase in value and the dollar decrease in value. Let's go to the dollar index. Yeah, look at that. Since March April. Dollar index has devalued. But what has happened to inflation? So if you guys have been following me, what do you think has happened to the dollar's inflation? Has it gone up or has it gone down? This is the question. Down. Someone said down. All right. Anyone want to second that? Ah, yep. Misha. Up, up, exactly. That's exactly it. It's gone up. Yeah, and let's have a look. Let's have a look at dollar inflation countries. US inflation, inflation rate. Look at what's been happening since April. Inflation rate. Aha. Yeah. So inverse correlation, yes. But you have to understand, I don't know who what your name is, it just says waiting for name, but yes, it's inverse, but you if you can understand why, and I know you came late, so it's 100%, um, it's probably not clear you know, to you because you did come late, but if you can understand why after watching, you know, when you watch the video, you'll, you'll, you'll know that this is an effect and this is what happens to inflation when a currency devalues, sorry, a currency devalues like this. Yeah. Now, let's do the opposite now. Let's go to 
Europe, yeah? So we looked at the euro dollar and we've seen Europe and euro go higher since, you know, April, May, June, July, right? And it's all the way up here. What should have happened to inflation? What should happen to inflation? So an expensive currency, an appreciating currency should do what to inflation? There you go, down. Yeah, so let's go to Europe. Euro area. Inflation. Look at that. Kind of rose a little bit, but ever since, it's just literally remained negative. So everything I've been talking about, everything I've been talking about, you've just literally seen. So now the question becomes, this is where the question comes, is how do we make money from this? 